What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is the GBA Season 5 postseason wrap up, along with my uh, predictions for the Season 5 playoffs and just uh, a little bit of an update of what's going on on the channel. I had originally already recorded this. Uh, I just as I was about to do the outro, I just kind of canceled out of it because I felt like I was rambling. And I don't really want to ramble. I want to try and keep this short and sweet. I have a tendency to talk a lot. So uh, I'm going to try and keep this short and not repeat myself too much. We'll start off by talking about how I felt about the season, give you guys my thoughts, give you my feelings on it and everything. Ultimately, I'm I'm bummed I didn't make the playoffs. I think I did so much better this season. I think I I think I played better. I think I prepped better. I think I had really interesting sets that kept people really entertained. I think I drafted a team that everyone was like, "Oh, look at this bulk. It's going to be so boring." And then I think I played it in a very balanced uh, not even semi-stall. I normally play, I like semi-stall, but I didn't even play a semi-stall style. I played a very balanced, and I really let my offense do the talking, and people, uh, only a few teams were able to really respond well to that. And I liked the team I drafted this season. I enjoyed it immensely. I enjoyed the season immensely, and I'm bummed I didn't make the playoffs. That said, I have no one to blame but myself. I know that there were a lot of mistakes I made and uh, you know I like I run over some of them in my head but uh, I'm gonna I've learned to let it go a little bit uh, you can really beat yourself the beginning of last season three games in three losses in, I I was thinking to myself I I don't deserve to be here I shouldn't be here this is horrible terrible I'm the joke of the GBA and stuff like that and I didn't think I was gonna be I was ready to be that person and luckily I was able to turn that around and last season only missed the playoffs by differential and once again this season missing the playoffs just by differential Dan taking the spot by one uh, one one kill over me and it's hard not to look back and be like where could I have picked up one differential by not screwing up you know it's sad to be in that situation and and see your playoff hopes go away but but it's okay. I'm I'm happy with how the season went. I think I performed well. And I'm looking forward to next season. Consider this your announcement that the Giantes will be back for season six of the GBA. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the draft again. But I'm also really looking forward to a break because it is a lot of team prep, a lot of planning, uh, a lot of editing that goes into all these videos, more so than goes into a, an everyday kind of video. And so I, I'm looking forward to the break from that. But um, still bummed out that I didn't make the playoffs. Congratulations to Dan, who had an amazing season. I got a few comments and posts and tweets that were pretty negative towards Dan. And I want to nip this in the bud right now. I don't condone this kind of talk. I don't condone this kind of behavior. Dan earned his spot. He played just as many games as I did, and he got just as many wins as I did. I am in no way more deserving for any reason whatsoever. He is an amazing player. He deserves his spot here. He earned it and we created an amazing drama for the last week of the GBA that, uh, I mean, I, it sucks to be the loser in that situation, but he earned it fair and square. Sucks the sucks that it went this way, but, um, Dan's, Dan's a great player. He has a great team and I'm looking forward to seeing him in the, in the postseason. So that said, any final thoughts I have about the season? Uh, I liked the team I drafted and I'm going to look forward to drafting next season to try and change up a few ideas again and, and keep working until I find really a, a team that's very truly me and that works in this format for me and, and the play style that I have. Um, but ultimately I'm happy with a lot of what I put out. I'm happy with the, most of the videos I put out. The problem is that the nature of my team being very very much a dichotomy meant that another team that planned to match me stride for stride we had these kind of stally battles and you saw that a little bit in the battle against the Loudrids, my first battle against the dawn fan and the battle that you didn't see against the pelipers was going a pretty similar way also so um i'm gonna look to draft a team that negates the chances of that happening again and I'm really looking forward to drafting again next season. I don't want to go over specific match by match things here. I just think I had a great season. I took on some of the best of them and I lost uh, matches that I thought I shouldn't have and matches that I, I thought I deserved to lose. So 
ultimately, I feel pretty good about the season. I really would have liked to make it to the playoffs, but no other sentiment is stronger for me than that I loved my division. I loved Blue Division. Being in a division with Lars and Dan and Tup, and we were the division to be. If we had a division v division, we would mop the floor. We had the best. Our, if you look at the win loss of our entire division, we had the best record in the entire GBA, and it was awesome to be a part of that. And there was never an easy win for me this entire season. I had to earn everything, and I'm really glad that I made more greater than a 500 record. I improved on my record last season. I think I made. Um, more interesting sets and just ultimately I'm really happy with it. So let's go over my postseason predictions. I don't really want to go super analyst about this and talk about the predictions too much. I know you guys are probably just curious about what what I think. Um, so I'll try and keep this quick. Let's start with Johto. The third rank Arcaniners versus the second rank Red Sox. I I'm going to give this one to the Arcaniners. And me saying that quickly doesn't mean that I thought it was an easy decision. Uh, at the beginning of the season, I actually thought uh, that the Red Sox were probably going to be the team to beat. I think I they were my the first team I went up against. I felt like I was a little bit rusty from the GBA, and um, my team prep was a little weird. But ultimately, it it emphasized to me really early weaknesses that I had in my in my defensive core that I would eventually shore up with a with a couple of choice trades. And just looking at him playing at the beginning of the season, I thought he was the man to beat. But he slowed down a little bit in the middle of the season, and George was always very consistent. And I think ultimately George's um, o Tier 1, Tier 2 threats uh, are very very well matched up against the Red Sox Tier 1, Tier 2 threats. So I think the Red Sox are going to have to go deeper into their roster. That puts them at a bit of a disadvantage. And two very talented players like that you give a disadvantage to one of them, they're going to have a, a hole to dig themselves out of. Not to say that he can't, but I think I'm going to give this one uh, to the underdog, uh, to George. I think George takes it. The Loudridge versus the Murrell, I'm giving it to my boy Miguel. Miguel's got to have this. I, I think he's really got it. The Loudridge draft a team that's very similar to last season, but hits a little less hard, equally as fast, and doesn't have as good a wall. So I actually think it's just a little bit of a weaker version of the team he had last season. I think the Marill are very well equipped to take them on. He's just got to maneuver around a couple of pretty big threats on the Loudridge team, and I think he can ultimately, I think he can do that. So uh, as long as he doesn't forget to Jen, uh, Jen, and then train for happiness on, <laughs> he has several Mon that that would need it. So I think he should make sure that he does that. But I give that one to Miguel. Uh, in that semifinal meetup between the Arcaniners and the Marill. They're one for one against each other, guys, but I got to give it once again to my boy Miguel. I think he can take on the Arcaniners with a win. Um, uh, George is a great player, but overall, Miguel's record against George is... What is it? Is it 3-2? and two? I think it's 3-2, and two, or maybe, uh, maybe they haven't even met that many times, but I think it's positive, and... Um, I have a lot of faith in Miguel as a battler, and he plays well in the postseason, he preps well, he's got great ideas, great team builder, and while I think his team is weaker this season than it was last season, he's using it incredibly well, and I think he's got the answers to, to George. So I predict Miguel going to the finals from the Johto side. On the Kanto side, the first... the the Dan versus Lars is going to be such a hard pick for me. I've played against both of them. I know both of their styles, and I've seen both of their games against one another, and I think I'm going to predict an upset here, and I'm going to go with Dan taking on Lars, and I, I love both of these guys, so I, I don't want to give one of them a win and one of them a loss, and ultimately, it it's, a it's an underdog pick to not pick Lars in this scenario. He has had an amazing amazing season but Dan actually came really close to coming out of their meetups 2-0 and it was only because of a lot of momentum shifts and weirdness in their last match that presented Lars which was expertly maneuvered by Lars don't get me wrong but presented Lars with a situation to set up with um, Landorus I and give him the win I don't think Dan's going to let this situation come about as easily and he's going to make it really hard for Lars to get a sweep and then in a in a pure punch for punch kind of scenario, I think Dan does have an opportunity to really make that work. Um, Dan 
really is going to have to prep hard for that though and if i if i look at his team builder and it doesn't look super uh super well thought out then i might change my tone but i think he's going to put it on the line for the playoffs and i think i think i'm going to predict an upset there so i think dan over the don fan fizzy stardust versus john the pelipers versus um fizz's atlanta hall luchas i i this one's a hard one. These teams are amazing teams, and Fizz has had an amazing season. And I did get a chance to play against both of them. There was some weirdness against the Pelipers that resulted in me just ending up forfeiting and not putting out a video. It was a very bizarre set of circumstances that I'm not going to go into. I, I got to play against Fizz too, and I think I made some fundamental errors in my match against Fizz. I think it's some of the biggest mistakes I made. Yeah, uh, this season that resulted in me losing, but I think I could have won that game. Whereas in my game against John, I tried to play through a lot of the scenarios, and I don't think I could have won it. And for that reason, I'm actually going to give this match to John. Um, I think they match up their teams pretty well. John's uh, doing a lot better. This team works a lot better for him than he had last season. I'm going to give this one to... Once again, this is an upset, but I'm going to give it to John here. Uh, I'm going to predict John to go to the semifinals and face off against Dan in that match... I'm also going to give that match to John. I think John, this is a great, uh, great matchup. These guys have played against each other a lot, Dan versus John. But uh, John's team is pretty well equipped for Dan's team. And uh, I think the Pelopers have had a really good season. I predict them going on to the finals and matching off against the uh, the Marill. And oh man, that's, I haven't painted that picture actually. Even last time I kind of cut out the, uh, the video around about this point but i if if that's the final matchup i'm gonna i'm gonna hashtag finish what we started i'm gonna give it to my boy john aka pokemon and the new orleans pelipers i think i'm gonna predict them to be the uh the season five champions this this year and um i think i think they're gonna have what it takes to overcome the Marill and it's just going to be a lot of prep and I bet we're going to see an amazing matchup in the finals there. So that's my full postseason um, postseason predictions, guys. And uh, let me know what you guys think the, the games are going to turn out in the comment section down below. And uh, definitely follow the, um, the GBA official YouTube and Twitter for updates on this postseason. Um, I had a blast with you guys. Thank you so much for following and subscribing. I do intend to be putting out some Pokemon and maybe other video game videos while while the GBA is on hiatus. I don't want to go completely cold turkey from YouTube, but um, there's not going to be those weekly GBA matches anymore. And uh, I'll miss you guys. I'll miss your comments. Thank you for your support of the Giantes uh, over the course of the season. And I really look forward to seeing you guys again in Season 6. No matter what changes befall the GBA in the offseason, I'm looking forward to it, guys. So thank you so much for your support. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.